Maybe this will work. Yes. There we go. We in? We in? Yes. All right. There we go. All right, buddy. Sorry for the technical difficulties there. It was literally just working a few minutes ago, and then it wasn't. But thank you all so much for waiting and showing up to this. I'm really excited to get this thing going. So Syracuse and Ohio, game one of Simulation Syracuse. Be sure to go check out all of our stuff at orangefizz.net and follow us at orangefizz. This is my personal YouTube channel. My name is John Eads. And without further ado, let's get into it, guys. Be sure to, to talk in the chat, leave anything in there, send me questions. Uh, let's just have a good time, all right? Enjoy this. Disable for this video. Let me see if I can take it off and make it appear. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right. The live chat was disabled. That's my fault, guys. Uh, should be up now. So go ahead. Anything you want to say, just say it in there, and we'll have a good time. So, looking forward to see how this one plays out. It should be... I, I let it... Yeah, it should be... Yeah, you should be able to. What do you mean? Not for kids, so I'm not really sure why that's the case. I might have had to do that before. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, so the Bobcats have a very good running back. I think he's the best player on their team. His last name's Tuggle. I think it's DeMontre, Tuggle, something like that. Nice play right there. Getting in the backfield was Jihad Carter, the rising sophomore there, young and making a big play. So it brings up third and medium there. And by the way, uh, yes, the live chat's not working for some reason. I don't know why. I just changed it so that it should be. But I think it's uh, made the setting made for kids video, which is just dumb. So next time I'll make sure to take that off so we do have a live chat. But Oh, it does work now. All right, good. I don't know what's going on. Um, i got my little brother in the back. Help me out with this uh, incomplete pass right there. So Ohio's going to punt on the opening possession. Good stop from the defense. 
Let's see what the special teams can do. I didn't uh, edit who the punt returner, kick returner would be, so I guess we'll just find out right here. It's like four. I don't know why I'm blanking on numbers, but uh, there's Taj Harris. Who's four? Oh, no, he should not be there. I thought I took him off the roster. That's my fault. All right, whatever. I did make up the rosters for both teams overall and uh, whatnot because they weren't updated for the rosters I typically use. Screen pass on the first play going out to Tucker. It's funny that a screen pass actually works for Syracuse. Didn't work at all last year, but Tucker with a nice catch. Five-yard pickup right there. Let's see how the offensive line looks. The starting five left to right should reflect how it is in real life with you know Berger on the left, service on the right. Pretty good run right here up the middle. Tucker bounces off a tackle, picks up a few. Brings up third and manageable. If the Orange can come out and get a first down in the opening possession, that'd be huge for momentum. Okay. Let's see. DeVito. Oh, looks like it's a play-action pass. DeVito's actually got a lot of time in the pocket, and he finds a receiver. It's Courtney Jackson making the catch for the first down. You have not seen a Syracuse quarterback have that much time in the pocket in years, guys. Oh, that's great. So a big first down there. It's got the Orange in the Bobcats territory. DeVito's passing here, finds a check down underneath. I believe that's Damian Alford. Yes, it is. So nice catch right there. Second and four, got a drive right here. Looks like a read option. DeVito's going up the middle, showing a little bit of mobility. Love to see it. Picks up the first down with his legs. That's the big debate this whole offseason and going into the 2021 season, right, is who's the quarterback going to be? Is it Garrett Schrader with his dual threat abilities? Is it Jacoby and Morgan? After what he showed last year, is it going to be DeVito? As he finds Landon Morris right there. True freshman tight end, Landon Morris. Be on the lookout for this guy. He's kind of a flex tight end. He's more of a receiving threat. Could see some time as a true freshman. He gets a nice snag right there. Second and four. Haven't really seen a lot of running, especially with Tucker. Another screen pass right here. Second one of this drive. This time it doesn't work. The Orange got five on the first one. They lose five right here. Perhaps getting a little bit too fancy right there. You know, you're moving the ball pretty well with the passing game. I'd like to see him just hand it off to Tucker. But third and nine, got to convert right here. Luckily, you have one of the best kickers in the nation, and Andre Schmidt, if you don't pick up this first down. Probably be a, about a 40, 50 yarder. It's going to be a draw for Tucker. He finds a little bit of running room. I like that play call. I don't really mind that one. You're passing the ball pretty well, but I don't mind you just playing conservative, taking some points to the opening drive, especially because you've got to stop with the defense on the first one. So Schmidt, a 43-yarder, should be good for him. And it is. So 3-0, the Syracuse lead after each team has an offensive possession. Not a bad first drive. Faced with a couple third-down situations, and the Orange are able to move the chains a couple times and ultimately results in three points. We'll bring the defense back on the field after a pretty good first series, I would say, a three and out. Again, feel free to drop anything in the live chat below. Like the video, sub to the channel. I'll be doing the entire season on here. And be sure to check out all of the content of Orange Fizz at orangefizz.net. Give us a follow at Orange Fizz on Twitter. Here we go. Ohio second offensive series. Mikel Jones right there for the tackle. So a nice stop. Ohio's really deep at wide receiver. And also safety, I believe. That those are the two deepest spots for them. Tight end two, actually. So uh, th this is going to be a toss-up. Should be a very competitive game when the time comes in September. So I'm excited to see how this one plays out right here. A running play on second down to Tuggle. So it's the Montre Tuggle. That's the guy you got to look out for. He's probably the best player on their team, really. He's a sixth-year senior, one of those super seniors. And they might go back to him right here on third and short. See what the SU run defense has. Still running that 3-3-5. Looks like they got five down linemen, three hands in the dirt, two off the edge. They're going to pass right here. And Mikel Jones in there, not for a forced fumble, but he's in there for a sack. The ball falls incomplete. Their quarterback's hurt as well. Another big stop for Syracuse, and Jones making a big play coming off a huge 2020 season. So two drives and two stops for the Syracuse defense. 
And Ohio punts it back. It looks like, all right, Nikeen Johnson is the punt returner. The one dude I forgot to take off the roster. I'll get that fixed for next game. I'll actually fix it uh, before the next special team series. I'll put somebody else back at punt returner. He's now at Kent State, in case you didn't know. But here we go. First play of this drive is a handoff to Tucker. Looked like a counter play, but that one shut down for a minimal gain. As far as run blocking goes, the offensive line hasn't looked too good. But as far as pass pro and pass protection, pass blocking goes, it's been pretty good so far. Hand off to Tucker. Sweeper on the left side. Has some daylight and has a first down. Biggest run of the game for Sean Tucker right there. Trying to become Syracuse's first 1,000-yard back since 2012. I think uh, if Tucker's able to do that, Syracuse could have a great season. Need a couple big plays like that, though. Another draw right here for Tucker. Not bad. He gets ahead for four yards. Haven't been too upset with the play calling so far. You've seen a couple screens, a couple draws. They've spread it out as well with the pass. They're going five wide right here. Let's see what they can do. Only a uh, three-man rush. DeVito finds a receiver over the middle. I think it's Javante Williams. Yes, it is. 29-yard pitch and catch right there. Very well done. Had all the time in the world. Looked like it was only a three-man rush. A couple of spies, perhaps. I don't know why you'd be trying to spy DeVito, really. Not much of a running threat. But either way, Javante Williams making the biggest catch of his career right there. He's got Syracuse in business, knocking on the door in the red zone. Got two tight ends set right here. DeVito in the gun with Tucker. He's going to hand it off for Shawnee. Rumbles ahead for a one-yard gain. So second and nine. That's one other thing that Syracuse wasn't too good at last year was red zone offense. You know, a lot of drives stalled, had to settle for field goals. Sometimes they even miss those field goals. So this is kind of crucial right here. Let's see if they can convert. Looks like a curl play down to Taj Harris near side. Picks up eight yards, so 31. Now, what are we doing here? I, I'd love to see him hand it off to Chris Elmore. I know that's obviously not going to happen. Probably a handoff for Tucker and maybe running around the right side with the uh, tight end. That's exactly what it is, but DeVito's going to keep it on the read option. He rumbles forward, and he's in there. How about Tommy DeVito, ladies and gentlemen? Breaks a couple tackles and falls into the end zone for a touchdown. And just like that, it's a 10-0 Syracuse lead in Athens early on. Beautiful drive. That's probably the best Syracuse offensive drive I have seen. Gosh. Not, I mean, didn't see one as good as that last year. Probably 2019 at some point. That was beautiful. Let's see what the defense can do. They've been very good so far. Very stout defensively against the run and the pass. It's a run on first down. I think Ohio's probably got a new quarterback in because a uh, nice play right there by Josh Black because I think he was injured in the previous drive, so they should have a new guy in. And honestly, the guy that's coming in now should have been the starter for them. So uh, last name's Rourke. Another run play right here. A little bit of room, not much. Looks like Canton Arku got in there to make the tackle. So third and long. If the Orange can get the stop right here, they got a chance to blow this thing open early on. Going to be a pass. Crossing route over the middle. And he's just short. Oh, my gosh. They almost gave him that friendly animation there. But it's fourth and inches, and Ohio's going to punt it. So three drives and three stops for the Syracuse defense, arguably the strength of this team heading into the season. I don't even know if that's an argument, really. I forgot to change the punt return. I swear I'll change it for next time, guys. I promise. Nikeem's not even doing that good anyway. So, so far, so good from Tommy DeVito. Two drives, both resulted in points. See what he's got on drive number three. Plenty of time again. And, oh, a dangerous pass right there. That's one thing. This season, DeVito should have more time. He hasn't really thrown that many interceptions so far in his Syracuse career. I think it, uh, the most he's thrown is five. 
five or six, somewhere in that neighborhood as he takes a huge hit right there on a QB draw. I don't know why you're running a QB draw with DeVito. Now that he's going to have more time, it's going to be interesting to see what his decision-making is like. Can he find those open receivers, or is he going to force some bad throws and throw some interceptions? Third and 12, another screen pass. Third one of the game. Tucker breaks a tackle, and he's going to get the first down. Unbelievable, baby. Sean Tucker with the moxie, breaks a tackle, gets ahead for 15 yards, and moves the sticks. Great blocking on that play as well. As you get another look at it here, you got Carlos Vettorello. And Dakota Davis getting up ahead. Davis picks up that last ceiling block that allows Tucker to cross the sticks and get that first down. That's beautiful. Looks like Sterling Gilbert and Babers aren't afraid of the screen pass this year. At times last year, it looked awful. First play is another pass to Courtney Jackson. Another young guy is going to get... A bigger role next season at slot, especially now that Nikeem Johnson's off as a flash at Kent State. Jackson had 10 catches for 69 yards last season. Looks like they're going to use him here on a QB slot options play. And a kind of an awkward pitch from DeVito. And Jackson gets no yards on the play, so it brings up third down. Let's see what Sterling Gilbert and Babers have here. That's actually going to end the first quarter, excuse me. So 10 to nothing. At the end of one, like I said, impressive start. The defense has been phenomenal. The offense has had two drives. Both have resulted in points. And this is drive number three, looking to get even more. And let's see if the Orange can start off the second quarter on a high note right here. Three for four on third down conversions today. It's going to be a pass. DeVito has plenty of time, and he finds a receiver. It's Sean Tucker who came out of the backfield, and he has his fourth catch of the day, 22 yards. Not much of a receiving threat last year, but he's already taken on kind of that big role so far today. Love to see it. DeVito passing again. Still only a three-man rush. The offensive line doing an absolutely phenomenal job. Gives DeVito enough time to find a Javante Williams, excuse me, along the near sideline for about 30 yards. Man, they just forgot about my man. So here we go, another red zone possession for the Orange, second one of the day. They're one for one so far. Let's see if they can make it two for two. Another draw for Tucker, and he's brought down for a loss. Seen a lot of screen, a lot of draw. I'd like to see the offense mix up the play calling a little bit. I mean, I just honestly hand it off to Tucker on a straight inside zone play or something like that. It doesn't really have to be a draw, you know. Here we go, five wide. Got four receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Oh, we got a blitzer coming off the edge. He's going to bring down DeVito for a five-yard loss right there. An exotic blitz set, blitz set by the Bobcats. Nobody accounted for 14 off the edge right here, and he brings down Tommy. So third and 16. We'll see what the play call is going to be here. We've seen screen on third and long. We've seen a draw. What are they going to do this time? It's a three-receiver set with a tight end. Tucker in the game. Going to be a pass. Only a three-man rush. DeVito's moving around in the pocket. Evades a tackler, but not the next guy. He's going to be sacked. That's just poor pocket presence by Tommy DeVito. The, the offensive line gave him plenty of time. Look at this. He's got plenty of time, and he's just kind of moving around in there. And they could have done a better job with that guy, probably. There's five of them just kind of surrounded DeVito there. But if there's nothing open, you got to get out of the pocket and scramble or just check it down. Either way, should result in points right here. It's a 34-yard field goal. Is it 34? I think it's 38. Yeah, 38 for Schmidt. And he's 2 for 2 on the day with that one. So 13 to nothing to Syracuse a lead. The offense playing well, playing well. 3 for 3 on drives, getting points. The defense, though, I think is the story of the game so far. If they can get a shutout in game number 1, that would be absolutely phenomenal. A big step forward. It was a pretty one-sided first quarter, but I wouldn't be surprised if things changed in a big way before halftime. Richard says, I hope Cuse has a good year. I think so, too. I dropped my rough draft uh, predictions for the Orange, and I have them going 5-7 and seven right now, but I have them winning three games in the ACC. Uh, I, I picked them to win this game, of course. 5-7 um, and seven is my record, though, for right now, and again, that could change. I'm just uh, still kind of 
researching through teams and seeing what the landscape of the conference is looking like. Uh, it's just kind of a, a prove-it year, I think, for the Orange. As a, a pass along the sideline is a dangerous one. Cornelius Nunn nearly has the interception over there. He's stepping into the spotlight this year with Ify Melifonwu off to the draft. Should be Garrett Williams and Nunn on the outside. But, yeah, I think 5-7 and seven, uh, is kind of a medium. Oh, an interception! Put a pin in that for just a second. A dangerous pass along the far sideline is picked off by Deuce Chestnut, the true freshman, ladies and gentlemen. The highest rated recruit in Syracuse's 2021 class makes a huge play in game number one. Love to see that. Could happen in real life, too. He's, uh, he's the third best corner on the roster in this game, so he'd be the nickelback, quote-unquote. But like I was saying, 5-7 is kind of the median record for Syracuse this year, I would say. Um, I think the best case scenario would be a seven and five situation where they win some of those ACC toss up games over, you know, the Boston colleges, the Wake Forest, the Virginia Techs. Worst case scenario, probably three and nine, two and ten, unfortunately. But I don't think that's going to happen. Here's Devito passing on first down. Finds Anthony Queeley, the Orange's number two option at wideout. He's got Taj Harris at one, Queeley two, and then Courtney Jackson at three. But drop your record project. Record predictions in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Where do you guys have the Syracuse Orange going in 2021? So there's another screen pass to Tucker. Yeah, not a fan of that one. That's the fourth screen pass we've seen. They, they've Two of them have worked, two haven't. Especially in that situation, I don't think you need to run a screen pass. So Schmidt, another field goal. This one, a 43-yarder. Can he go three for three? Yes, he can. This guy is the best place, pick, place kicker. In the nation, ladies and gentlemen, should be in competition for the Groza Award once again. He won it a couple of years ago. He should be in contention for the Burlesworth as well as uh, you know a former walk-on too, which is pretty incredible. But the Syracuse defense doing a fantastic job. It's kind of like the opener last year when the Orange went on the road and played North Carolina. The defense kept a minute for three quarters of that game. The offense though just couldn't put any points up. Six points. I think they had four or five possessions. In the Tar Heels territory, and all they got out of that was two field goals, and you know they had chances in the red zone too. So I think the difference maker for the Syracuse team this year is points off of turnovers. We know how good Syracuse is at forcing those turnovers, but can you convert and make it make a team pay off those turnovers? You know that's going to be the big difference this year. Here we go, second and twelve. I didn't see who got that last TFL, but the run defense has been very good. As I say that, though, Ohio finds. A pretty nice hole there, Tuggle does, I should say. Seven-yard gain, brings up third and medium. Again, he's their best player, and the Orange have done a pretty good job to limit his, limit the impact that he's been able to have so far. Here we go, third and five, going to be a pass, keeping extra guys in for protection. Doesn't matter, though, Syracuse still gets a sack. That's McKinley Williams getting in there, making the play. I know he's number zero in real life, but... You can't get zero in the video game still. Hopefully that changes when the new one comes out in a couple years. But anyways, McKinley Bear Williams makes a huge play. Gets in the backfield for the sack. And the Syracuse defense continues to dominate here with the shutout as we get closer and closer to halftime. I don't think they held the team to a scoreless half at all last season. Definitely not the, obviously not the entire year. But I don't even know about a half. That'd be pretty incredible if they could do that right here. Taj Harris is a 91 overall player, and he's supposed to be the Orange's best player on the roster, best player on the offense, number one wide receiver. Hasn't really had that big of an impact so far. Now, to be fair, they haven't targeted him. They're running these dumb screen passes instead of giving the ball to Taj Harris, so I want to see them do that going forward. Here's DeVito, passing on first down, tries to find Queeley over the middle on a slam, but he drops it. Brings up second and ten. How do you guys think DeVito's doing so far? I think he's having a pretty good game, personally. He's going to pass it right here. Finds a receiver. There's Taj Harris. There we go, baby. Got to get him involved. 12 yards for Taj right there. It's his second catch of the day. He's got 20 yards. And uh, the guy's attending media day in uh, a couple weeks here. And we'll be at that. Orange Fizz will be at that. I'll be at that. Uh, he's going to be one of the representatives for Syracuse. As here's a pass over the middle for Courtney Jackson, a 14-yard gain. So Harris was picked as one of the representatives, surprisingly, actually, because I thought it would be DeVito or one of the other elder statesmen. Uh, but it's going to be Aaron Service, Josh Black, and Taj Harris. So we'll have a lot of content from those media days on our website at orangefizz.net and at orangefizz on Twitter. Here's Tucker taking a carry up the middle. He gets two yards. I'm pretty surprised by the score, honestly, as 
we're almost at halftime. I thought it'd be a little bit closer, but it's still a competitive. It's it's in a competitive spot. But if Syracuse can score a touchdown on this drive, I don't know. Might might have put it away early. Let's see though. Another handoff for Tucker. We've only seen Sean Tucker getting the carries so far. Jarvion Howard and Abdul Adams are on the roster, as is Cooper Lutz. But it's all it's been all Tucker so far. And he's a 78 overall player as a sophomore. Jarvion Howard's a 78 overall player as a fifth-year senior. And Abdul Adams is somewhere in that territory as well. Here's a pass on third and short to Courtney Jackson. This guy has been an absolute chain mover so far, ladies and gentlemen. Four catches for 43 yards. I think he's primed to have a huge season. He's one of my picks for a breakout player on the offensive side of things. Him, uh, Luke Benson was on there. And one other guy. Here's DeVito taking a sack, though, as he's trying to get rid of that pass. That's tough to see. Yeah, you know, nothing you can do there from the offensive line perspective. They just sent more guys than you can handle. Um, what was I saying, though? Luke Benson, Courtney Jackson, and uh, somebody else. Can't think of who it was. Uh, Cooper Lutz, might have been? Anyways, here's a speed option on second and goal. Tucker picks up one. So third and goal from the 16. You got it. It's got to be a pass, right? I mean, you could go conservative here, make it a three-possession game with a field goal. Let's see what they do. They are going to pass it. They do bring a blitz. DeVito gets it off. Oh, my gosh. That should have been uh, picked off going back the other way. That was a dangerous throw. Swatted incomplete. So, again, Schmidt on for his fourth field goal attempt of the game. This one a chip shot. 33-yarder. And it's good. So 19 to nothing. The Syracuse lead. Field goal, touchdown. Field goal, field goal, field goal for the offense. I mean, points are points, but you'd like to see them punch them in for touchdowns. We have a comment down here. Another one from Richard. Our defense has always been better than our offense since Dungey left. Great point. Yeah. Great point. And I think really the byproduct of that has been the quarterback play. Haven't really had a quarterback that can run in, pass. And, uh, I mean, Eric Dungy also just had that it factor, that moxie, you know. And it seems like so he was here so long ago, but it was just 2018, you know, three years ago. So, um, But I think there's definitely some pieces for the offense to be very good next year between Sean Tucker, the receiving core. Uh, the offensive line should be improved. I mean, it can't be worse, right? It should be improved. And then whoever trots out there at quarterback, I think DeVito, once he has, I mean, we'll, we'll see what he can do when he has a potent offensive line in front of him. I'll, I'll just say that because he did look good in that mop-up duty he had. and Sometimes he was in there for some pretty uh, competitive snaps in 2018 as well. So we've seen it before. Just got to see it uh, you know, see it again. Here we go. Second and 10, under two minutes to halftime. Quarterback's taking off right here. Oh, Armani Rogers is still in the game. Okay, he was injured in the first quarter, but he's still playing. Jihad Cutter with a nice tackle in the open space right there. He's looked pretty good. One of those young defensive players that saw a lot of time last year due to injuries and whatnot. Just a three-man rush right here. John, uh, Kingsley Jonathan nearly got in there for a sack. Wow, what a catch on the outside by Cameron Odom right there. Over two Syracuse defenders. Let's see that one more time. Uh, it was uh, Williams nearly getting in there for that sack. Looks like Chestnut just got absolutely mossed, man. That's tough to see. Yikes. All right, here we go, defense. Got to keep this shutout. Minute 20 to go. Ohio's got two timeouts. They're at the 38-yard 30, line, we'll say. Let's see. Passing right here. Quarterback's taking off, and he's getting sacked. Great job of containing the quarterback, keeping him in the pocket right there. That's Josh Black again, his second TFL of the day. See him fight off a couple of tacklers. Him, Kingsley Jonathan, McKinley Williams, all coming back for their sixth years of eligibility, I believe. They're all going to be super seniors. I think, actually, I think Kingsley Jonathan's a fifth year, um, but uh, Williams and Black are the elder statesmen. That one's picked off, second of the day, this time, it looks like, no, it's not Neil Nunn. Who is 35? Why am I blanking? Was that uh, Atkinson? It was! Chase Atkinson, one of those young corners, didn't see a lot of time last year, but comes into the ball game and makes a huge play. Picks off Armani Rodgers for the second time this game. So Deuce Chestnut has one, and now Atkinson has one. The Orange are plus two in the turnover department as Sean Tucker takes a carry. 
and he gets ahead for six yards. 51 seconds to go. You got two timeouts. Plenty of time. Let's make uh, let's make something happen here. They're going five wide on second and four. DeVito's going to hot route a receiver to the far side. Just a four-man rush from Ohio, and it gets home. Come on, fellas. Looked like Aaron Service got beat off the edge over there. Bryce Dugan with the sack. He's one of their better defensive linemen. Yeah, he just straight up beat Service one-on-one -on -one there. We've seen that quite a few times in the past few years, haven't we, guys? That's tough. That's tough. All right, third and 13. Going to let the clock run. That's smart. We'll see if they go conservative right here and just look to punt it. Yeah, they are going to pass. DeVito throws across his body to Jackson along the near side. He nearly caught up and crossed the first down marker. But uh, nice play nonetheless. Gets you some favorable field position. You can punt this thing away. Unfortunately, he went out of bounds, so it stops the clock. But also a new uh, punter this year. Nolan Cooney's gone. He's in the NFL with Sterling Hoffrichter. I think it's Jamison Williams is his name. Oh, his last name is Williams. I think it's James or Jamison Williams, one of those two. So keep an eye out for this guy. Be sure to say some stuff in the live chat, guys. Any observations you have? Any uh, Anything about Syracuse sports, football? Anything at all, man. Nice tackle by Michael Jones right there. He hits with some ferocity. This quarterback's been a little antsy in the pocket. And uh, it's kind of hurt him. So clock's going to run. Should take us to halftime. We'll see. We'll see. There it is. All right, so they go conservative clock. So 19 to nothing at the half, guys. Syracuse coming out. And uh, I would say surprising. I, I, if I had to pick it right now, the, the uh, score at halftime between the Orange and the Bobcats in September, I wouldn't say it'd be 19-0. I'd probably say it'd be like 14-10, something like that, really competitive. But uh, this game should already be over, really. The Orange have had six or seven offensive possessions, and they scored points on all every possession except for one, I think, the one they just had where they punted. If they scored touchdowns on all those, it could be a 42-0, 35-0 ball game right now. So that's kind of the difference. You can't be doing that stuff once you hit ACC play. You can't be settling for field goals. You can't beat teams with field goals. So I'd like to see them punch it into the end zone a couple more times. Maybe they get the backups in uh, if things continue to get a little bit out of hand. Let me change up the special teams returners, though, while we're at halftime here after these stats show. You get a good look at them right here. So total yardage nearing 200, but the uh, majority of it's been through the air, which is kind of surprising. You, you'd think it'd be on the ground, but they're, they're plus two in the turnover department. Time possession, absolutely dominating that. So, uh, I'd like to see them get their rush numbers up. I think that would really help with the pass game. But, uh, great start. Really can't complain too much. Especially after a 1-10 season, you know. Again, be sure to leave a like and uh, subscribe to the channel here because I'll be hosting these throughout the summer. Again, I'm doing the non-conference twice per week. And then, uh, let me change this. Oh, I guess I can't. Oh, my controller turned off. That's why. Um, and then, w once ACC play comes around, I'll be doing one per week. Um, for the bi-weekly ones, I'll be going like Tuesday, Friday, probably. That'll be the split. Let me uh, change the depth chart up re real quick right here. Uh, but Friday nights will typically be when the streams are, and uh, we're going to go all the way up to the start of the season. Can I not change? Oh, strategy is probably where it's at. <clears throat> um, yeah, okay. All right, so we'll, get, uh, we'll change up the returners here, get Nikeem out of there. Oh, I can't edit. I'm not playing for them, though. Can I do that? No, I can't do that. I don't think I can. Just bear with me for a sec, guys. Trying to get this uh, sorted out here. Oh, you're right. You're right. All right, let me switch this up. All right, whatever. Trying to get Nikeem off of the punt returner spot so we can get somebody else in there that's actually playing for Syracuse this year. Um, what is... Oh, shoot. We actually have to... <laughs> we actually have to play a play. All right, here we go. Yeah, I'll just run it. Something they're not doing, running the ball. All right, I'm going to play this one play so I can switch up the uh, punt returner. A lot of pressure here, guys. A lot of pressure. Huge. All right. Let's get this fixed up, and we'll uh, continue on here. 
Nice little nine-yard pickup right there. Nearly half of what Syracuse has rushing-wise this entire game. All right, we'll put Taj in and um, Tucker in as the two kick returners. And punt returner will do, uh, do Taj. How about that? I don't know if that's how it's actually going to be, but we'll go with that. And let me get out of here so we can get back to your regularly scheduled programming here. As much as I lo would love to play right now, I, I can't because... Got to keep it fair, right? If I was playing, this game would have been over end of the first quarter. All right, I got to play this one, too. So I guess we'll just go ahead and do that. All right, last play, guys. Last play. Right, you got to let me have some fun, too, you know? All right, DeVito. What kind of, what kind of long ball you got, brother? All right, this might be a touchdown, guys. I'm sorry if it is. Oh, we barely get it off. Queely! Oh, almost had it. All right, that was my last play. That was my last play. Third and one. All right, got two plays in there. That was fun. I'm going to play after this, too, because I was playing before, and uh, I was like, damn, I forgot I have to do a live stream at 735, so I had to end it. But here's DeVito running. Oh, my gosh, guys. I literally set you up only for success, and he fails because they go triple option on third and one. Why are you making it complicated? Golly, you got a you got an 86 overall fullback in Chris Elmore. You could have handed it off to him, man. Uh, see, that's that's kind of the frustrating. That's the frustration I felt last season, especially in that Louisville game uh, where we lost 30 to nothing. The play calling, uh, the play calling across the entire season was just questionable. That was right there. Doesn't change just because just because it's a video game, you know. But all right, defense on the field. They've been the story this entire game. Absolutely phenomenal. Pitching a shutout right now. We'll see if that can continue. See Garrett Williams not covering anybody down here. So they've run it to the left side. Oh, and Tuggle finds a hole, breaks a few tackles, and gets an explosive run, 11 yards. If they're going to get back in this game and do anything offensively, it's going to be through Tuggle. So let's see. Another run play. Ooh, nearly a face mask there, but no. Was that Jonathan with the tackle there? I believe it was. Second and eight. Got to win this down if you're Syracuse. Williams goes in there and absolutely bangs the quarterback. But uh, a free runner down the sideline. That's Tuggle. Like I said, they're going to get back in this thing. It's going to be through Tuggle. Their biggest play of the game right there. 27-yard burst. The orange just failed to contain on the outside. From the 31 yard line. First down. Pass play here on first and ten. The quarterback falls down. Jameis Winston style. Come on, Armani. What you doing, brother? That hurts, man. They had a chance to get some points. That may have just hurt him right there. So second and 21 now. Looks like a screen pass. Get there, get there, get there. Yeah, baby. Eric Cole? Who's that, right? Let's see. Yeah, I think it was Eric Coley. Yeah. He didn't play like at all last year because he was out with an injury. So he makes a big play right there. The Syracuse native should be back in strong safety for this year. I was kind of doing a double take because I thought Sean Tucker was 34. I didn't, whatever. Passing it here on third and just a mile, and I, uh, Isaiah Cox gets an 11-yard reception, but brings up fourth and 15 in Syracuse territory. Should be a punting situation. Oh, it's a field goal situation. All right, here we go. 54-yarder. I don't think their kicker's that good. He's like 70 overall. I hope Syracuse has a guy back to return this. They don't, but if they did, they may have had a chance at a kick six. But that is not even close. I don't know why they tried to kick that. Actually, it wasn't terrible. It was, it was closer than I thought, actually. But still, uh, no good. And now Syracuse starts with favorable field position at the 37-yard line, coming out with a five-wide set. And they bring Alford in motion. He takes the handoff. Uh, interesting, to say the least. I don't know why you're bringing Alford in for a, a jet sweep. He's probably not the guy to give it to right there. 
Just my opinion. He's 6'5". He's more of an outside receiver. I'd like to see Jackson get that handoff, but what do I know, you know? Second and eight. And DeVito's getting sacked. They got to run the football, guys. I have barely seen any run plays where they just give it to Sean Tucker and, and let him run the football. And that's what, the third sack of the game? Third or fourth sack, and Dugan gets it again. Duggan, whatever his name is. Oh, yikes. Put Froome in? <laughs> yeah, okay, if, um, I'll put all the backups in if it gets to, uh, like a four-possession game or start of the fourth quarter. Big play right there. They find Alford up the sideline to move the chains. If, uh, if the Orange get it to a 25, 30-point game, I'll put all the backups in. And uh, Froome, I'm, I, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that last name. I really am. If he's on there, I'll put him in. But how about Damian Alford, man? Another guy who's stepping into a bigger role this season on the outside. Come on, Tommy. Piece of drive together. Oh, play action. And they find Jackson, I believe. Yes, up the seam for 25. Interesting, the play action works because the Orange have barely run the football. But just right up the seam, nobody covered my boy Jackson. I think it was a zone. Had to be his own coverage, 100%. Uh, but DeVito with a strike. And the Orange are into the Bobcats territory inside the 30-yard line, knocking on the door of the red zone. See if they can finish one. Here's a handoff to Tucker. Finally, and look at that. A gaping hole up the middle. Tucker goes right through. The Red Seas parted right there. My man gets up and over 50 yards with a big burst. That's what I'm talking about. Give the ball to Sean. Feed that man. It's first down. Six points here. So, fourth red zone attempt, I believe this is. The Orange, one touchdown, two field goals. Let's make it two touchdowns. Come on, Tommy. Can't, can't take a sack right here. He does it. He finds a receiver open. It's Queeley in the back of the end zone. And it's all Syracuse here midway through the third, baby. a boy, Tommy. Facing down the blitzer. Let's it go and finds his man. Queeley in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. That's just beautiful. Six plays, 61 yards, about two minutes on that drive. It's now 26-0, the Syracuse lead. Unbelievable. Again, be sure to drop your record predictions down low, guys. I said 5-7, and seven. let me know if I'm an idiot or... If I'm a genius, anything in between is acceptable. Here's Johnson taking off, but again, the defensive line keeps him in the pocket, and McKinley Williams gets his second sack of the day. Kind of got an assist from uh, Kingsley Jonathan there, keeping him inside that pocket. But uh, a team defensive play results in a sack. And boy, oh boy, this defense looked phenomenal, man. Under second-year defensive coordinator Tony White running that 3-3-5. Check down on second and 13, and right into the lap of Garrett Williams, and he sends his man to the turf for another big loss. So we've seen Deuce Chestnut make a play, Chase Atkinson make a play. We finally see Garrett, uh, Neil Nunn as well. Finally see Garrett Williams, the freshman All-American from last year, step up and make a play. And it puts Ohio in a very unfavorable situation. Third and 18. They're one for seven on third downs today. They're going to pass it right here. Quarterbacks had nobody open. I think they were trying to set up a bubble screen. Either way, it results in another sack. It's Deuce Chestnut, baby, making the play. The true freshman. How about it? Yeah, this is fun. I think he was named one of the top 100 Incoming true freshman or top impact players by 247 Sports, and he plays for the Syracuse Orange. He's had a huge impact today. A pick, a sack, some tackles. I'm excited to see him play for Syracuse. And here's Taj Harris, the new punt returner. Let's see what he can do. Finds a little bit of room down the right side, picks up 12 yards, and puts Syracuse in great starting field position here. And if, uh, if, we get a, if Syracuse scores a touchdown on this drive, I'll be sure to put in some of the backups. 7-5 and five says 65 pancakes. Yeah, like I said, I think that's best case scenario for Syracuse this year. And that's not even bad because the ACC is going to be uber competitive, I think, top to bottom. 
Here we go. Hand off to Tucker. He's got a lot of room on this one. Picks up seven more. Let's see if he can hit the century mark. I'd love to see that. He ended off last season on the road at Notre Dame with a 100-yard performance, as did Cooper Lutz. Let's see if he can follow up in the opener in 2021 with the same. DeVito passing. Oh, wide open down the sideline. It's Queeley. Man, has he had a big game. 23 right there. He should be nearing 100. Oh, excuse me. No, not even close. <laughs> Three catches for 37 yards, but he did have that last touchdown. DeVito's had a whale of a game, guys. Couple bad decisions. A couple near interceptions, but only a couple. He's 21 for 25, about 300 yards. I think he's looking really good. Probably his best performance as a Syracuse quarterback. It's like a triple option to the right side. Slot options play. Oh, no, it's a play action. DeVito's winding up for the end zone, and that one is intercepted. He threw it into triple coverage. He had a wide-open receiver nearby. Tried to force it in there to Alford, who, again, was triple covered. And it results in his first interception of the game. That was a little broadcaster jinx right there. That's my fault. Alex, you are not late to... Oh, you're a little late to the party. It's 26 down in Syracuse. But you can rewind and go watch from the beginning if you want. Just scroll uh, the, the timestamp all the way back to the beginning. You can rewatch or uh, hang out with us till the end and then rewatch it from there. But uh, thank you for tuning in. Richard says 8-5 and five with a bowl win. Yeah, I mean, depending on what bowl it is and who they play and who opts out from the other team, you know, whatever the situation is, I could totally see them going 8-5. and five. I would say 8-5, and five, though, is best-case scenario for Syracuse in 2021 and again that's respectable big pass right here looks like it was man-to-man -man and a safety was matched up with uh, the Ohio receiver here he gets a big catch Coley throws him out of bounds but not after a big gainer so the Bobcats knocking on the door in Syracuse territory at the 45 yard line still trying to get you know get on the board the Orange want to keep this shut out and the quarterback finds some room here. Johnson finds some room, moves up the A-gap, picks up eight yards, and slides down. As good as Syracuse has done with QB contained so far today. Not as good right there. That's all right. Second and two. Got to make a play right here. Going to take off again. This time the orange right there. Michael Jones waiting for the quarterback. Brings him down. His fifth tackle of the day. He's also got a sack and a TFL. And that brings up a huge third down, folks. If we want the shutout, we got to get this stop right here on this one. Let's go. One for eight today. The Bobcats are on third downs. Let's make it one for nine. Come on, fellas. Got three down linemen, three linebackers in the game. Going to run it. And he's got the first down. A couple pancakes there. You saw Michael Jones get bulldozed over. And Tuggle gets ahead for the first down. This is the sequence I would say you have to win if you want to keep this shut up because Ohio's going to kick the field goal. You already know it's going to happen, you know. Let's see, though. Under a minute to go in the third. Johnson's going to throw it right here. Checks it down. Oh, he throws it away. Ah, man, that was nearly a backwards pass. That could have been considered a fumble. I don't know. That's just one man's opinion, I guess. Great coverage, though, across the board. Let's see if we can get some pressure here on second and ten. It's like Josh Black's just a stand-up rusher here off the near side edge. And Stephon Thompson gets in there. First fumble. Ball's loose. And McKinley Williams gets the recovery. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Thompson with a nice swim move in there. Beats the right tackle. Dislodges that football. And Williams jumps on it. That's the third forced turnover of the day for Syracuse. And that may have just preserved the shutout right there as we near the end of the third. Beautiful stuff, baby. Let's go. All right, tight slots formation, play action pass. Play action has been lethal today for Syracuse, and it is right here once again. DeVito delivers to Queeley. He breaks the tackle and is down inside the 25. 34 yards for Queeley, his fourth catch of the day for 71 yards. And DeVito with another beautiful read, beautiful delivery. Queeley with the hands. Damn, I'm juiced up, fellas. Let's go. Put the game away right here. What we got? Four wide set. Tucker in the backfield. Still been the only back in this game. DeVito going to pass again. Veterello is getting thrown back, but DeVito gets it away. Finds Jackson for the first down. He's inside the 15. 
And he's nearing the century mark today. Seventh catch for 91 yards. All right, here we go, Tommy. Got uh, Landon Morris in the game at tight end. Three wide receiver set. DeVito passing again. Good pass protection. Almost breaks down. DeVito throws over the middle. Intended for Taj Harris. And it's picked off. Oh, my gosh, guys. That's the second possession in a row that DeVito's forced the ball in there in the red zone. And the Bobcats have made him pay. Ah. Tommy's looked really good up until these last couple minutes. And he's just, <clears throat> Syracuse is just begging and pleading Ohio to, you know, keep the door just ever so slightly open to get back in this game as Syracuse gets a sack right there. Looks like it was Coley making the play. That's a good way to end the quarter. 26 to nothing. The score at the end of three frames. All Syracuse. The defense been absolutely phenomenal. This game could easily be 52, 55, anywhere in that realm to nothing. But instead, it's 26 zip. Ohio still has still has a puncher's chance here. But uh, the Orange could put it away with a big defensive stop right here. That's exactly what they're going to get as Garrett Williams meets the tight end there. I don't know why they were handed off to a tight end. And drives him back into the end zone. That's his second TFL today. Brings up third and 13. Ohio's in the shadow of their own end zone here. How about a safety? That'd be nice. Let's see. Let's see. Blitzing, finds an underneath the receiver. Thompson's right there, though, to bring down Odom. Fourth and 11. Another stop for the Syracuse defense. Gosh, they've just been so good today. So good. You can bet the putter's sweating to have to kick now, if all things go to plan, the Orange should have great starting field position for this last drive, and hopefully this is the one that is uh, you know, going for the jugular here. Harris bounces it outside, picks up 13, and Syracuse will start at Ohio's 32 as we take a look at the stats here. So 26 points on 55 plays, 341 total yards, 16 first downs, and Ohio's really just done nothing on their side of things. But like I said, if Syracuse didn't turn the ball over and converted touchdowns in the red zone, this thing could have been over at the end of the first quarter as DeVito takes off on a triple option, breaks a tackle, nearly another, but it's brought down for a no-gainer. Schrader time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, even if, if it, this will be the last drive for the starters, no matter what happens. I'll put Schrader in, I'll put the backups in, unless you guys see one series with them. This will be the last drive, though, okay? Triple option again. Jackson takes the pitch and gets a couple yards up over there. Third and seven. They're in field goal range. Schmidt's four for four today, I want to say. Four for four or five for five. I think it's four for four. The Orange are 50% on third down so far today. Three wide set to the right side. DeVito going to pass, finds Creeley, and he moves the chains inside the 10, breaks a tackle, stiff arms a man, and he's escorted out of bounds at the 6-yard line. Anthony Creeley, fifth catch of the day for 94 yards. He moves the chains again, and DeVito responds to the adversity with a big throw. Hey, Bones, how you doing, buddy? Glad to see you in here. Hey, DeVito's actually showing some pocket presence today, believe it or not. <laughs> here we go. Let's see what he can do here. Play action pass. Throwing it near side. Finds Jackson, who had to wait for it because DeVito lobbed it. Two-yard gain. Brings up second and goal from the three. I'd just love to see him from the four, excuse me. I'd love to see him just hand it off to Tucker here. They're going to go with a four-wide set. Let's see. Uh, he's going to keep it. Oh, just give it to Tucker, please. Golly, man. Just This is what they did last year, too, man. They would like go Rex Culpepper, fake jet sweep. They just get way too fancy in the red zone. Just keep it simple, fellas. Here we go. Should be man-to-man -man right here. Nope, it's going to be zone, but he's got time. He gets it away. Oh, my gosh. Alfred was open in the back of the end zone, but he drops it. So the Orange will settle for three once again. A chip shot for Schmidt, his fifth of the day. He'll probably make this blindfolded, really. And it's good. There we go. So 29 nothing. It is what it is, guys. Again, I'd love to see him punch him in for touchdowns, but it's kind of been the theme all day and all of last season. Settling for three when you could get seven. But I'll get the backups in for the next offensive series. I'm going to let the starting defense stay in. It's to see if they can preserve this shutout. Here's what they've done today. Seven sacks, 
two picks, a forced fumble, and a PBU. Both defenses have been pretty disruptive, I would say. But, whew, seven sacks. That's our defense doing that, not the opposing defense doing that to our offense, which is just kind of wild. Here we go. Ooh, that was a strike. Coley got beat. I think that was a zone. Yeah, it was. That was a tight window, but he fit it in there. Come on, D. Uh, Geometry Dash Madness says, I think Syracuse will go 1-11 in real life in Ohio, 4-8 and eight in real life. Interesting. Okay. I don't know about 1-11 because they play Ohio and UAlbany, so I think they're going to win both of those games, obviously. And that's 2-10 and 10 right there, so I don't know about that one. But here's Johnson running on first down, and he finds a seam. That could have been a late hit in real life. Bobcats putting together a drive right here. Come on, guys. I don't think they'll settle for a field goal. They wouldn't be James Franklin petty, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Motion the tight end right to left, or left to right, excuse me. Taking off again. Oh, Jonathan had a chance at him. Atkinson brings him down after a three-yard pickup. Come on, fellas. Whew. Quarterback's been jittery in the pocket, man. He just takes off, like, almost immediately, you know. Four wide set, second and seven. A pass, gets a pressure, gets a pressure. Jo Jonathan over overruns it again. But it looks like Coley brings him down. You see this one more time. He's just, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Just sit in the, you know, sit in the pocket. But Coley brings him down. So third and five, uh, Geometry Dash says, they have a chance to beat Rutgers, but I don't favor Syracuse against Rutgers. Yeah, I don't either. I have Rutgers beating Syracuse. Rutgers, one of the, uh, no, not one of the better teams in the Big Ten, but the Big Ten's competitive. They were competitive in the Big Ten last year. I think right now they're a better team than Syracuse as the Orange get in for a near sack. Looked like it was Josh Black off the edge forcing that one, and I guess he got his arm through or whatever, so it's an incomplete pass. So fourth and five, 4.23 to go. They get the stop right here. It's over. Here we go. It's a pass. Looks like we're getting some pressure. Oh, it gets home. And it's nearly intercepted. Garrett Williams drops the pick. But it was fourth down anyways. Looks like the Orange just preserved the shutout with that one. And with that said, we'll get the we'll get the backups in on both sides of the ball and have some fun for the last four minutes. But how about the performance, baby, from the starting defense? Clap it up. Clap it up. Wherever you are, clap it up for him. Oh, let me get in here real quick. <laughs> Man, that was great. Best defensive performance we've seen out of Syracuse. I don't I don't really know since when. You guys let me know since when. I really can't think of one right now. I'm too excited about it. Uh, we'll get the backups in. Uh, after this possession, going bowling? Yeah, I mean, I said 5-7, and seven, but if one of those losses becomes a win, obviously that's 6-6. Six and six. They could definitely go bowling. All right, DeVito finds Jackson there, and that'll be their last play of this game. Let me know how you guys think the offense did under Tommy DeVito's watch today. I think he did pretty well, aside from those couple bad decisions he made. I think he did pretty well. Uh, my buddy Bones, who was in here a second ago, I'm not sure if he's still here or not, uh, set the over-under for Tommy DeVito picks in 2021 at 6. Let me know if he goes over or under that. He had two today, and this is only one game, so keep that in mind. Let's get the backups in, though. Garrett Schrader, you know, Jarvion Howard, Abdul Adams. I'm going to play one play here. I'm back. Here we go. Here we go. Let's get uh, let's get Howard to carry. We'll get, uh, get Alford out of there. All right, let's go. First, uh, first carry for Jarvion in two years. And it's a good one. He's got some room along the edge. Stiff on this dude. All right, eight yards for Jarvion. His first carry back from opting out of the 2020 season. And I will go ahead and get myself out of here so we can watch the sim again. I know I got a comment. Uh, I'll get. I'll respond to that in just a sec. I wish I could play. If you guys want to see me play, I'll do a Syracuse Dynasty. Just make sure you like the vid and sub to the channel for that. I'm going to do one more play right here. Let's see what we can do. Uh, I got, if I could find it. Oh, there it is. It's my favorite play in the entire game. Uh, sports video games. I usually only play this one because I, I stream on here and stuff and I take it pretty seriously, but I also play Chell and NCAA basketball and Madden and stuff. So, you know, I play a lot of them. Oh, that was actually really well defended. That was my last play. 
Uh, one of my favorite plays in the game right there. They actually played that one pretty well. Schrader's pass incomplete. So third and two. Let's see what they can do. Pitt is a wacky team. Yeah, I know. I got Syracuse beating Pitt. I think they lost a lot of production on the defensive side. And the offensive side, they'll be good again. But uh, Schrader, what are you doing, bud? Uh, breaks a couple tackles. But he's brought down for a four-yard loss. Ugh. I'm glad they were deciding to, you know, utilize his dual threat abilities. But anyways, yeah, I got Syracuse beating Pitt in that uh, season finale. That'll be so. Uh, that one should be fun. I'm hoping I can uh, be in Syracuse to watch that one. Pitt going five and seven. Yeah, I'd say that's realistic. I don't know what their schedule is off the top of my head, but five and seven, six and six sounds, you know, sounds about right to me. So uh, that possession comes up empty. I think we're about to run these all, all these seconds off the clock, even though we don't even need to. Come on, yo. So uh, the backup defense coming in. Who are you guys excited to see? We should have. Um, I should see uh, Terry Lockett, another true freshman who enrolled early. Maybe Malcolm Folk will get in there. I'm trying to think of other guys. Deuce Chestnut should be in there. We'll see. We'll see. Next stream is going to be on Friday night, guys. Syracuse, U Albany. It's not going to be on revamped because I can't get U Albany into the revamped version. So it'll be on. My old Xbox 360 is still be NCAA 14. Beautiful. Hey, how, speaking of Deuce Chestnut, how about that, y'all? Um, it'll still be NCAA 14, but you, you know, U Albany is an FCS team, or they're, you know, they're not FBS, whatever. So not in this game. Neither is Liberty. So for U Albany and Liberty, they'll be on the base game, the old NCAA 14 version. But that's fine. Still come. We'll have a good time. Nice play right there. A sack. Who got it? Anwar Sparrow. Probably butchered that name. One of the reserve linebackers. Gets in there and makes a big play. It's probably his first sack of his career. Also, has, that's a sick name, honestly. Let's not kid ourselves. So third and 13, chance at a safety, maybe? Uh, Geometry Dash says, way too early ACC championship prediction. Clemson, Miami. Yeah, I could see Clemson and Miami. I think the Tigers are taking a step back this year. I could also see North Carolina getting into that championship game, you know? We'll see, though. Ooh. Going up top. Oh, Greenwood. Come on, man. Drops the pick. Great coverage, though. Fourth and 13. We'll see one more offensive possession. They'll probably go conservative clock, but whatever. Uh, but, yeah, Clemson and Miami's good pick. I think North Carolina could make it, though. I really do. If not this year, definitely next year. Nice punt. Returnable for uh, Javante. And he gets ahead for 12 yards. So, 141 left in the fourth quarter. Backup offense will be in the game. They're showing Ohio highlights, even though they're losing by 29 points. I don't really know why. They should be highlighting the Syracuse defense for the shutout they're pitching, but whatever. They're losing, bro. All right, he, he's had a good game. This Duggan guy. Watch out for this guy, for real. One of their better players. Be sure to leave a like on the vid and subscribe to the channel, guys. Turn on the bell for the post notifications. Here's uh, Jarvion getting another carry. Um, you won't miss any of the streams. You'll get a notification whenever I start a stream, but I'll be posting on Facebook and all the groups I'm in on there, Syracuse Football, Syracuse Orange Empire, and uh, Syracuse Water Cooler. Uh, on Twitter, at OrangeFizz, and at OrangeFizz.net, I'll be doing recap articles, preview articles, and I'll, I'll just be doing a lot of updates on there as well. Here's Schrader with a nice run, 14 yards up the middle. This is like my favorite video game, and uh, nobody else really does a Syracuse live stream like this preseason, so... Uh, Orange Fizz is going ahead and taking care of that. So glad you guys could all join us today. Really good turnout. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. For real, we're gonna have more of these, and they're only gonna get better. Here's Jarvion up the middle again. Another nice carry. Will Syracuse score another touchdown just to be uh, that guy? No, they won't. All right, so that's gonna do it, guys. Twenty-nine to nothing. The final score. We'll take a look at the final stats in just a second. But an impressive. Season opener for the Orange coming off a 1-10 season. They come out and smash Ohio. Um, I know it's Ohio. They're a Mac school. But this is this game is considered a toss-up by most preseason pundits. So for you to come out and win 29 to <laughs> the kick it's playing the game. That's funny. For you to come out and win 29 to nothing is impressive. And again, if the tape doesn't lie, Syracuse could have won this game by 60 points if they didn't set up for field goals and turn the ball over in the red zone. So really, a lot of good things to take away from this performance. A lot of encouraging things were seen today. And I'm excited to see how the Orange can do going forward. So like I said, UAlbany is the next game. That'll be on Friday. And then we'll pick it up next Tuesday with Rutgers and finish off the uh, non-conference with Liberty next Friday. And then after that, we'll be doing one stream per week 
in the ACC schedule leading up all the way to the opener September 4th at Ohio. But uh, don't go anywhere yet, just got just yet, guys. We'll take a look at the final stats and uh, wrap this thing up, man. That was so fun. Comment down below your thoughts on that performance, top to bottom. Uh, Geometry Dash, NC State at 7-5 or 6-6. Six and six. Uh, Probably 7-5. and five. I think they're going to be better, though, than that even. Again, I haven't looked at their schedule. Uh, well, I don't have it in front of me, but I, I think they could have a great team if they figure out quarterback. Uh, here we go. Scoring summary. Syracuse, 19-0 at halftime, then 10-0 in the second half. 0-0-0-0 zero, 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 zero throughout the entire way from Ohio. The defense, phenomenal for the Orange. And here are the player stats. DeVito. No, I don't want to look at this guy. Nope, nope, nope. DeVito, 26 for 33, 331 yards, a touchdown, two picks, both coming in the third quarter in the red zone. Like I said, decision-making. Just got to improve a little bit. Now that he has a great offensive line in front of him, or a better offensive line, I should say, he should have more time to make decisions. Hopefully those are good decisions. Schrader 0 for 1. Uh, got a couple minutes, couple snaps there at the end. But uh, the other thing about DeVito today, uh, sacked five times. That's still quite a bit. That's still quite a bit. Syracuse has given up oof, 39 in the last two uh, two seasons each. Uh, you guys you guys know the storyline. Syracuse has been sacked. The offensive line has allowed a lot of sacks the past couple of years. So five in the opener, especially to a team like Ohio, who's not going to have as good of talent as the Virginia Techs, the Clemsons. You know, that's not a great great sign. But And that's exactly why DeVito has negative 26 rushing yards, you see right there. But for the, oh, let's focus on the good things. Sean Tucker, 15 carries for 71 yards, no touchdowns. I would like to see him get a couple more touches, especially in the red zone. But, uh, you know, that'll get better as the season goes on. Play action was great today because of the run game. Uh, Jarvion Howard, three late carries for 24 yards, coming back from opting out of the 2020 season. Garrett Schrader, two carries, again, late for 10 yards. Uh, Courtney Jackson had two for two yards. Alford had one for two yards. Uh, DeVito actually had a rushing touchdown today as well. Don't sleep on that. He did have that first uh, first touchdown of the year for the Orange to make it 10 0 in the first quarter. Receiving wise, huge game. Really spread out, too. Really encouraging. So Courtney Jackson led the Orange. Nine catches for 108 yards. Already surpassed the amount of yards he had last season, only 69. He had 10 catches all of last year as well. So in one game, how about that? Anthony Queeley, five catches for 94 yards and a touchdown. He had a great game. Unbelievable. He's expected to be the number two receiver coming into this year, but with that performance, you could argue he's going to be the number one. Javante Williams, two catches for 58 yards. A couple big plays for the redshirt freshman stepping into a bigger role this year, as is Damian Alford. If I'm saying this name wrong, let me know. It's Alford or Alford, one of those two. Uh, the 6'5 receiver, two catches for 23 yards. A couple big ones on third down. Sean Tucker had five catches for 22 yards, mostly on screen passes early on in the game. Taj Harris had two for 20. would like to see him get a couple more targets. He's your number one guy, you know what I mean? And then Landon Morris, the true freshman tight end, had one catch for six yards. Not bad, not bad. Um, yeah, so service allowed two sacks. Petrie allowed a sack. As far as the defense goes, uh, Michael Jones led us with seven tackles. Coley and Jonathan tied for second with six. And then uh, a bunch of other guys tied for three down there. Here are the TFL numbers. Ooh, we got a lot of them. Love to see that. So Kingsley Jonathan had one. Anwar Sparrow had one. That was a sack. Chestnut had a sack. Uh, Michael Jones had a sack. Jihad Carter had a TFL. Uh, McKinley Williams, two sacks. Eric Coley, a sack and a TFL. Josh Black, a sack and a TFL. Thompson, a sack and a TFL. And Garrett Williams had two TFLs. Anybody else have a sack that I didn't mention? I think we hit everybody. All right. Picks. Deuce Chestnut, the true freshman, had an interception the first of his career in his first game playing for the Orange. And Chase Atkinson also got his first career interception. The reserve corner from last year came in and made a big play. So that's encouraging. Deflections, probably a bunch of drop picks. I know Greenwood dropped a pick. Nunn dropped a pick. And Williams dropped a pick. So, yep, three drop picks right there. That's usually how it goes. Uh, two forced fumbles. Kingsley Jonathan had one. And Stephon Thompson had one on the sack that really preserved the shutout, I would say, there in the third quarter. Uh, McKinley Williams had a recovery on that one that Thompson forced. And that was that for the defensive uh, side of things. Andre Schmidt was your player of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Five field goal attempts, five makes, long of 43, two extra points as well. And he's picking up right where he left off. James Williams, that's going to be your new punter. That's his name. James is his name. He had three kicks today for 131 yards. Averaged about 44. 
and uh, one inside the 20, one for a touchback. Long of 52, so good for pro good performance by the new punter, replacing Nolan Cooney. So some pretty big shoes to fill right there. Taj Harris had one kick return for 25 yards. And, uh, well, there's Nikeem Johnson. Uh, Harris also had two for 24. Javante had one for 12. And that is going to do it for the player stats. Well, one last thing, we'll take a look at the team stats, and we'll get you guys out of here. Uh, so 19 first downs to eight, 414 yards of total offense. Only 83 rushing yards today, but 331 through the air compared to 83 for Ohio. 7 for 15 on third down compared to 2 for 12 for Ohio over there. And uh, red zone wise, oh, yikes, that's not good, guys. Uh, 5 for 8, we'll say, in the red zone. Two touchdowns, three field goals, but three empty possessions there. Uh, two turnovers compared to their three, so plus one in the turnover department. And time possession was 20 minutes to about 12. So you add it all up, man, you get a 29 to nothing. Syracuse victory. And that's going to end this stream, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in to the first episode of Simulation Syracuse. We're simulating the entire 2021 season for the Orange. And this was episode one. And Syracuse takes down Ohio. Like I said, we'll be back next week. Uh, not next week. We'll be back in a couple days. Friday night, same time, same place, 735. Syracuse returning home to the Carry Dome first Home game of the season against U Albany. We'll have it right here for you. Be sure to check out our content at Orange Fizz on Twitter, orangefizz.net. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd appreciate it. Thanks again so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you on Friday.